if uh, black plays knight c6 variation after e4 d6 d4 knight f6 knight c3 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 h3 castle bishop e3 and knight c6 bishop b5 suppose they play bishop d7 suppose they don't want to get um, double pawn so we still castle nothing changed on our end and on e5 we can simply take on e5 now this is very easy way to get clear maybe small advantage but clear advantage so suppose black takes with a knight or with a pawn that wouldn't make big difference okay now we take on e5 and black must take on e5 notice that black cannot take on b5 first because now if we take knight we take bishop uh, black takes our knight so but if we're gonna lose this knight anyway so we might as well play knight takes f7 and we're gonna have a better position after rook takes we're attacking the queen and on rook takes f7 we can take on b5 we have a better position here so after knight takes e5 black will go d takes e and this is we play bishop takes d7 and now it's better for black better to take with a knight well actually if they take with a queen it won't make much difference knight then we can simply go queen to e2 and rook on d1 now let me explain your bishop is a lot better than bishop on g7 bishop on e3 is much stronger piece besides we are a lot quicker to get on d file and once we get on d file we're gonna start doubling on this d file and black has to lose a lot of tempos trying to make it well if they took with a queen we can do the same thing we can take the queen knight takes now black also has to worry about after rook fd1 and rook fd8 they have to worry about moves like knight b5 attacking the a7 pawn and c7 pawn so and on top of everything we can still go rook d3 and rook d1 remember that in a pure defense unless black make makes really bad mistake white is not entitled to huge advantage but they always have better position and better prospects for middle game because their pieces will be standing a lot better again going to e4 d6 d4 knight f6 knight c3 g6 knight f3 bishop g7 h3 and when white won black castles white goes bishop e3 now we just covered knight c6 there are moves a6 and b6 those moves are most of the time similar because there is a b6 variation where we play a5 and there is a6 variation where we play a4 and now the best move for black is go b6 and we go e5 so in other words we can get this position with pawns on a6 on a4 or we can get this position with pawns on a7 and a2 which makes very little difference the way we play okay so let's look at b6 and the way i want to do it is this as we go as we progress in the variation we assuming that black can always put pawn on e6 and white pawn on a4 so we are gonna compare uh, one version of this position with pawn on, pawns on a2, a2 and a7 with the other version with pawns on a4 and a6 so and again I want to repeat so the way it may happen a6 a4 b6 or 
B6 right away. So in both cases, we play E5. Now, black has a choice. Black can take on E5, which is very weak continuation, and black can retreat the knight to D7. Also, black can retreat the knight to E8, which is uh, it seems to me like it's a simply bad move because knight on e8 does not have any any future. So, but let's look at the uh, uh, de continuation first. On de we go de, and black is in trouble. Again, you have to keep in mind that every time we discuss any position, we can put in our heads pawn on a6 and pawn on a4, see if it, that will make a big difference in the position. Okay, now the knight is hanging. Taking queen is real bad because white plays rook takes d1, and after knight d7 and knight d5, black is absolutely lost because there is a no good way to stop knight takes c7 since there is no knight a6 because bishop takes a6 followed by knight takes c7 and there is no other way to protect c7 pawn but here and exactly here we can see the difference if pawn was on a6 and white pawn was on a4 because black can play rook a7 and looks like black defended the c7 pawn but it's still a really bad position for black well it's really bad position for two, two different reasons so first we're gonna go knight takes e7 and it's the simplest way to play king h8 we can go knight takes c8 rook takes c8 and now we can go bishop to c4 attacking f7 pawn you see rook on a7 is terrible white is down a pawn for example knight takes e5 we could play knight takes e5 and on bishop takes e5 we have pawn hanging on b2 so we can simply go c3 and you see king on h8 stands badly pawn on f7 is hanging rook on a7 no one knows what it's doing there knight is badly on b8 white has a huge advantage here okay we just what we're gonna do is we simply castle put the rook on e1 and we control both uh, central files white has a big advantage so this is what's going to happen if black plays d takes e so we determined that d takes e is a really bad move so it takes a few seconds to reconstruct the position so in this position on b6 we went e5 so d takes c is a bad move that leaves us two um, other continuations well actually d takes c we didn't even finish on, on d takes c what is bad move is queen takes d1 however black has knight d7 now now we can get an advantage here two different ways for white one is simply go e6 f takes e and bishop c4 and then we castle we have weak pawn on e6 and this is really bad position for black but the other way i uh, would recommend you to play which i like very much is queen d5 attacking the a8 rook and again we have to assume that black could have had this position with pawns on a6 and a4 it hardly makes any difference because playing rook a7 is not much help for black so let's assume black goes c6 and white goes queen to e4 
Now, going queen to c7 is not good for black, because white will play e6, and once white plays e6 and opens black's king's position, it's not good. So black can play e6 and try to win e5 pawn. Interestingly enough, what we do here with e5 pawn, we could protect it if we want, but we want to give it away. We don't really care about the e5 pawn because we develop extremely strong attack. The way we play is castling long, queen c7, and now we are not going to protect bishop f4 for two reasons. First of all, after bishop f4, uh, black may have a good position by playing bishop b7 followed by c5 and opening the bishop. The other reason is we're voluntarily giving up this pawn by playing h4, knight takes e5, and h5. We gave a pawn not because we had to, because we wanted to. Now what we want after h5, we want to play h takes g, h takes g, and queen to h4. This is very serious threat. Now if black plays knight takes f3, we gladly and voluntarily again take it with the pawn. With the pawn, because queen goes to h4, h5 will be opened. There is nothing black can do to interfere with us opening the h file, and then we're gonna go queen h4. It's overwhelming and decisive attack for white. There is no way black can defend this position. Well, you wanna go a little farther, so we're gonna go a e5, just to open the bishop maybe. Uh, h takes g, a well, you see, f takes g will lead to immediate mate, because bishop c4 check, king h8, rook takes h7, actually another possibility is queen takes g6, you see how, how devastating it is, or rook takes h7 is simply a checkmate in two moves, king takes queen h4 check, bishop h6 is the only move, queen takes h6 checkmate, well, this is just one uh, small example of what can happen to black um, if they take with f-pawn, but if they take with h-pawn, I don't think this is much better, because we go queen h4, which forces rook e8, otherwise there is mate on h7, and now we have uh, multiple ways to win this position. We could go bishop c4, or we could go queen h7 check, and on king f8, bishop h6, which forces black to take on h6. Now notice, some move like f6 is not gonna help protecting with the queen, uh, the g7 bishop, because then we have simply queen h8 check, followed by queen takes g7. And uh, so if black plays bishop takes h6 check, we play queen takes h6 check. And uh, uh, you see it's all over now, because on king g8 we have checkmate, and on king g7 we have queen g5 check, and if king goes back, then queen f6 followed by rook h8 mate, and if pawn goes to f6, then rook h7 check, and on king e6, bishop c4 mate. You just have an example here of perfect uh, mating attack on black's king. It's instant attack. There is, it's not an attack uh, uh, we prepared, we just prepared it, and in two moves, we executed with a mating result. So again, so we went queen d5. I'm gonna do it once more from the time, from the point where we played queen d5. So we played queen d5 in this position. c6, 
we go queen e4 and black goes e6. Now we castling and you see the e5, the power of the e5 pawn is that it does not, it kind of cuts Bled's position on two parts, on king side and queen side. And by the time black gets to this pawn, we simply, uh, uh, we simply create devastating attack because all black pieces, rook on a8, knight on b8, bishop on c8, and knight on d7, they are on the opposite side of the board. What helps us greatly is pawn on g6 so that we can quickly open the h file and uh, uh, black cannot stop white's attack in, the, in this position. So let's go back to the e5 move. And after e5 move, here, um, after e5 move, uh, black, we already looked at d takes c, d takes c, and all consequences of it. And now we've, uh, we're going to look at move knight to d7. Now, this move is an interesting move and probably the best move in position. And again, black could have had pawns on a6, on a4. It doesn't make any difference yet. So the correct move is e6. That's what we want to play. And when black plays f takes e, we go bishop c4 attacking the e6 pawn. Now this is strictly positional pawn sacrifice. We're trying to play bishop takes e6. What should black do? Move like d5 is not possible. It's very bad move because white simply plays knight takes d5. And if e takes d, well, if if black does not take the knight, then white will simply move it back. So e takes d, bishop takes d5 check, king h8, and bishop takes a8. Now, here is the little trick about this position. We want an exchange. We want a rook for a bishop, for, for a knight. But black may have a hop for trapping the a8 bishop by playing c6. And if they do trap that bishop, they will have great position. But the fact of the matter is that they will never succeed. For example, we castle. And if they go something like b5 to try to capture the bishop with by playing knight b6 or queen c7, so on any of these moves, we're going to go d5. You see, after d5, our bishop is out. Either black goes c5 and bishop can come out, or black takes and bishop comes out. Um, and even if black plays, but if black plays e6, trying to stop d5, obviously that doesn't change anything because we're going to go c4, followed by d5. Pawn is on h3 was all the time. So, and we're going to go d5, and our bishop is out. We have big material advantage and easily winning position. So, so when we played bishop to c4 in this position, well, obviously, d5 is a blunder. So we shouldn't count on black making this terrible mistake. So we should expect black to play the best move knight f6. Now the move I like here very much is d5 because it forces black to play e5. Because if e takes d, then you will play bishop takes d5 and you see we're forking the king and the rook. And if knight takes d5, then queen takes d5 and nothing has changed, we win the rook. So after d5, expected move e5, and this is the quiet position 
with white on down and in my opinion white has here very big advantage now we go knight g5 here and here is why what we want to do is we can simply castle black's bishop on g7 is absolutely blocked with e5 pawn we have a nice square for our knight on e4 and we can go queen d2 rook e1 and maybe f4 later so this is strictly positional pawn sacrifice that smothers most of black's pieces actually i wouldn't even go to e4 with this knight because i would wait i like my knight on g5 i like when he goes h6 then h6 may be very bad because we go knight e4 now and you see now white will be threatening bishop takes h6 h6 is a big weakness and if black protects this pawn just as a idea then we can go bishop to d7 you see now white's bishop kind of a attacking g6 pawn indirectly we can go later f4 and we have all white pieces knight on c3 bishop on d3 bishop on e3 queen on d2 and knight on e4 attacking black's position and in order to get our rooks get our rooks involved we will go also f4 we have overwhelming position of course you may have difficulties executing it correctly uh, a first time but this is the position that where white has overwhelming attack and in this case we shouldn't just stop playing winning positions if we uh, we are not 100% sure how to win but we should try to learn how to win these positions but not, but not stopping pl not stop playing them so again so we go back now to the critical position where we went e5 so on b6 we go e5 e5 and this is very very strong position for white this covers a6 move where we're going a4 and on b6 e5 or b6 move where we go e5 there is no difference whether moves a6 and a4 are included so now we already covered b6 and a6 moves and we covered knight c6 move so the only other uh, interesting possibility here is to play not interesting probably the most logical to play for knight d7 and e5 this is kind of kind of a king's indian typical plan for black and uh, uh, knight d7 and e5 is the most logical and most sensible way to play for black but before they do that a lot of times they go c6 in order to put later their queen on c7 now look at the look at the, let's look at the bot continuations let's start with knight d7 the reason why knight d7 is not as good as preliminary c6 is this if they go c6 we go a4 and on knight d7 we are not gonna play e5 because black has simply knight d5 move also what black has i'm saying why we don't play e5 and you will understand why we need to know why we don't play e5 because also black can play d takes e d takes e and now knight d5 you see knight d5 move is possible only because the pawn is on c6 if pawn wasn't on c6 it wouldn't be possible now if we play knight takes d5 c takes d5 
and queen takes d5. This is good position for black because they simply play knight takes e5. Now white's queen is hanging and if queen takes on d8 then knight takes on f3. It's obviously favoring black. So that's the reason we are not gonna play e5. However, if black does not play c6, but they go immediately knight d7, then we do play e5. So we do play e5 because knight from f6 has no other square than e8, which is very passive and bad square. The reason knight h5 is losing because of g4 trapping this knight or the same thing would happen after d takes e, d takes e, knight h5 we're gonna go g4 so black should go knight e8 right away or knight e8 after taking and now knight e8 knight e8 it's a bad position for black in both cases because we go e6 f takes e, bishop c4, and now there is no way to protect the e6 pawn because knight cannot move because black's queen is hanging. You, are, you don't want to protect it with a king because of knight g5 check and you don't want to protect it with the rook because we're going to attack the rook with knight e4. This is already terrible position. It's a little better for black not uh, to take on e5, but play knight e8 right away. But it's still very difficult position because we can easily go bishop c4, threatening e6. And uh, interesting to see that it looks like black attacks the e5 pawn three times and white protects it twice but it's not so it's only illusion because after d takes c we go d takes e and you see that knight on d7 is pinned because queen on d8 is hanging this is very bad cramped and difficult position for black so for this reason only normal move in this continue in this position c6 now we want to stop in a future black from playing b5 we go a4 knight d7 now this position is better for white if we know how to play the whole idea in this position is when black goes e5 we to exchange pawns and put white's knight on c4 now the way it's gonna work the way it's gonna work is this we go bishop e2 we don't put bishop on c4 because we need the c4 square for the knight knight d2 and knight c4 after e5 we play d takes e d takes e you see now we have a green light for knight to go to d2 and c4 it's very very important that we don't castle yet castle is a weak move for white here is why if we castle black will go queen c7 and if we go knight d2 now black is going to go rook d8 and if we go knight c4 black may go knight b6 or knight f8 and you see that's not what we want and black is first on d file instead what we're gonna do we go knight d2 first and after queen c7 we go knight c4 and now rook d8 it's not gonna it's not like you are in trouble so you should castle first no black's pieces are very far from your king but now you're making queen d6 move before 
black opens the D file. And after queen takes d6 and knight takes d6, this position is extremely difficult and bad for black. Black can go knight b6, knight f8, because they have to open their pieces. Knight b6 is really bad because we can simply castle here. You see, protecting knight on d6. Now, bishop on c8 cannot come out because b7 pawn is hanging. Also, we threatening to go a5 and uh, bother this knight on b6. And after knight moves on from b6 to d7, we may go bishop c4, putting pressure on f7 pawn. Position is really bad. Suppose black played in this position knight to f8. Then we can take bishop on c8. This is also really bad for black. Now black has to take the knight with, with the active rook, because taking with this rook will result to loss of a pawn. Bishop takes a7. That's very difficult for black. So now, after knight takes c8, rook d takes c8, and what I would like to do before I castle and put my rook on d file, I would like to make all black's pieces look very bad. So only chance for activity black has knight e6 and knight d4. Let me put the bishop on c4. Make sure we make sure if knight goes to e6, we take on e6, and then we castle long and put double rooks. Now, black has a problem with their pieces, with passive pieces, knight on f6, bishop on g7. Black has a problem with the a pawn, and the reason why it's a problem, because if they push a pawn, there will be bishop b6, and they will never be able to play uh, bishop d8. And also, black has a problem with the double pawns. Our plan is very simple, rook d6, rook d1, and a child can play this position, it kind of plays by itself. Very, very difficult game for black. So basically what we have in Pirk, to summarize what we just looked at, we go e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, and when they play regular pair with g6, knight f3, bishop g7, and h3, castle, and now we play bishop e3. What we want to do, we just develop pieces very normal and uh, logical way. So, black has, now, overview, tells us that black has several ways of developing. Either they go b6 and bishop b7 without confronting uh, uh, white in the center with e5 or c5, and which if they go b6, we immediately start um, showing some activity with e5, with variation we just looked at. If they go for e5 by playing c6 and knight d7, then we have bishop e2, and after e5, d, e, d, e, knight d2 plan, followed by knight c4, just the way we looked, but on c6 we have to remember, re remember, the bullet points are this, when black goes c6, remember, you need the c4 square for knight, so you have to secure the square by playing a4, to prevent black's b5, that's one bullet point. So you know you don't allow black to play b5. That's the one thing you have to that has to has to uh, be remembered. If that's if they play c6. If black goes directly for e5, then we're gonna have. Uh, simply better position because we have better space with symmetrical pawn structure. And basically what we have, we don't have in any of the variations decisive advantage, but we have very 
comfortable and preferable for white position without much counterplay for black. This is strongly recommended for white by me and this couple of sharp variations we just looked when we go after b6 e5 and then followed by e6 or or uh, when black goes knight e8 when we go in some positions h4 and h5 so just the way we analyzed we have to know maybe one or two sharp variations and rest we have to know the bullet points and for some popular opening uh, like perk defense whatever we just looked in analysis it's not much to remember and you have good good weapon against perk defense so I strongly recommend to play it this way to play this way it's easy to learn and guarantees you very this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.